it's me Miranda and welcome to Mer's Cooking Adventure. Today's recipe is mini strawberry cheesecakes. I am a huge fan of cheesecake and so when I saw this recipe I just knew I had to do it. I love how it turned out. It was creamy and rich and just so delicious. Exactly what you want in a cheesecake. So I really hope you like this video. To start out, I am making the crust. So I'm pouring in some graham cracker crumbs, some brown sugar, and some melted butter. And now I'm just breaking up some of the bigger chunks of the brown sugar and mixing this all together so that the butter coats every single crumb. Now I'm going to make the cheesecake portion. As you can see, I already had cheesecake in my bowl and then I poured in some regular sugar and now I'm just going to cream that together. As you'll see in this section, there's a lot of mixing and then pausing to scrape down the sides so that everything gets mixed all together and creates that nice creamy texture that you want in a cheesecake. As you can see, I tried to scrape while the mixer was going. Obviously that didn't work very well, so I had to pause the mixing so I could scrape the bowl. Here I continue to mix after I scrape the bowl and you can see that the cream cheese is starting to get a lot more smoother. Here's another little pause where I had to scrape down the bowl again so that I could make sure that all of the cream cheese was getting that smooth texture. As you can see, there's no more chunks. It's really smooth and this is what you're looking like for the next steps. Here I add strawberry jam to the cream cheese so that it adds that strawberry flavor to the cheesecake. And then you just mix it together until the strawberry jam is incorporated. And again, I'm scraping down the bowl and now I'm adding eggs one at a time into the cream cheese mixture. As you can see, it doesn't really want to mix very well, um, so it took a little bit for the egg to incorporate itself into the cream cheese. Here I add another egg, and this time it goes a lot smoother and a lot quicker, so I was able to add the third egg pretty quickly right after, and you can see the mixture is nice and creamy. Again, we're pausing to scrape down the sides to make sure that everything is incorporated and that it continues to be nice and creamy. After our last scrape down, this is the last little bit that we have to mix just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. When I read the recipe, I thought it meant to use muffin tins. So that is what I am doing is I am scooping the cheesecake filling into my muffin tins. I used this six regular muffin tin and I wasn't quite sure how full to fill it so I left just a little bit of room to go back and fill as you see that I do um, throughout the muffin tin once I had them all filled up. And then I had leftover batter and realized that I needed to make more, so I grabbed individual muffin silicone cups and filled those up because I was curious if there would be a difference between the individual of the cup or a full muffin tin like I used previously. I do the same method as last time where I fill it up just leaving like a fourth of an inch to make sure that every cup is filled and then I went back through and filled it to pretty much the top of each cup. The next step was to put the crust on top and so I just took a tablespoon and used that to help me fill the cups up. After I filled them up, I pressed gently down to make sure that they stayed within the cup. And I do this exact same process for the individuals, but I had to do it one at a time instead of doing it all together like I was able to 
in the six regular muffin pan on the right. The next step is to pour boiling water into the pans that the muffin tins are in. And to be honest, I wasn't sure why you had to do that, so I googled it and it said that it helps the cheesecake cook evenly and it keeps the moisture in them so that they stay creamy, which is a fun fact if you didn't know like I didn't know. It was harder to pour on this tin rather than the individuals because with the individuals, I had a lot more room to work with, whereas in the six regular pan tin, I did not have a lot of room to work with. So this is just kind of a pan over of what it looks like right after I poured the hot water. You can see the steam rising. Here I'm putting the pans in. I had to be very, very careful because of the hot water bath that they were in. So it took me a lot longer to be able to put them in the oven than like a normal pan without hot water obviously, so I was trying not to burn myself in this process. Here I'm pulling them out. As soon as I opened up that door, oh, you guys, it smelled so good. I was so excited to try them, even though I knew it was gonna be a little bit before I could, just the smell was amazing. Again, I had to be very, very careful because of the hot water bath and just trying not to spill the water and make things complicated. <laughs> Here's a pan over of what they looked like right out of the oven. Nice and steamy. They had puffed up and again, they smelled so good. I was so excited and ready to try them. The cheesecake had to cool down in the fridge for at least two hours. So when I was coming up on that two hour mark, I decided to make the strawberry puree that goes on top of the cheesecakes. Um, it had me quarter strawberries and put them into a blender so that I could blend out all the strawberries and make a smooth puree. As you can see, it was quite a bit of strawberries to get through, but it wasn't too bad. It honestly didn't take as long as you're probably thinking it did. <laughs> Once I got into a groove, I would estimate that it took like 10 minutes tops to get everything chopped up. And here I'm pouring in sugar to add just a little bit of sweetness to it, and then lemon juice so that it can help blend smoothly. I have a pulse function on my blender, so that's what I did is I just kind of held that down, occasionally pulsed it to make sure that all the strawberries got blended smoothly and evenly. After it was blended, I poured it into a mesh strainer um, because you don't want any seeds in this puree. And so then I took a silicone spatula and just gently pressed the juice through the strainer because it would have taken a very, very long time to have it just drip through. Here I am very carefully taking out one of the cheesecakes that has cooled from one of the original six muffin tins and I place it on the plate and then I grab the strawberry puree and top the cheesecake with it and then I decided I wanted to try and be a little fancy and I added a dollop and spread it out in front just to make it look nice for fun and then I grabbed some diced strawberries and placed them on top. Here I wanted to try getting out just an individual and to see the difference between the two muffin tins. I'll be honest, I struggled a little bit with this one and it seemed like the first muffin tin was a lot easier to get the cheesecakes out. I tried to be all fancy again just for the fun of it, placed some more puree on top of this one 
and then some diced strawberries as well. And to be honest, I liked how my first plate ended up. I just think it looked a lot better than this one. This is the final product. Here I am diving into it. I'm so excited to try it. It was creamy and rich. The crust was perfect. Overall, it was fantastic. Thank you so much for baking with me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe down below. 